As a summer camp professional, have you ever been told you're so intimidating? Hello, Camp Pros. Welcome to the Camp Hacker Podcast. My name is Travis Allison. I am co-founder of Go Camp Pro, and I am excited to be here with you today on this episode. It is great to be back in the saddle. And my name is Gabrielle Rail. I'm one of the camp directors of Camp Waro. And Camp Waro is an all-girls camp in the Laurentian Mountains of Quebec, Canada. And we focus on creating a positive, safe community for women and girls. My name's Joe Richards. I'm the executive director at Pierce Williams Summer Camp and Retreat Facility in located in southwestern Ontario. We're part of the United Church of Canada's summer camp network of 55 camps across Canada. And uh, yeah, we do good stuff. Did you do? <laughs> Welcome to episode 138, everybody. Today we are asking the question, how does a camp director make themselves approachable? Before we dive into the topic, I want to remind you that um, your reviews of the show are incredibly important. So if you've ever got something out of a Camp Hacker show, something that you've used in your own staff training or marketing, or even just your own philosophy as a camp leader, we'd be so grateful if you took a chance and uh, just a couple of minutes and rated us. If you go to ratethispodcast.com slash camp, you can uh, find a couple of places where you can leave us ratings and, and reviews. And then uh, we'd be so grateful if you did. So today, pardon me, today we want to talk about how you make yourself approachable. I certainly know um, from my own experience, it took me at least a summer of being a camp director um, before I began to develop some intention around this, that I would be really specific. Certainly my very first summer as a camp director was so incredibly stressful. I think I had my uber stress face on all summer. Um, and only a few people knew me when I'd moved to this camp to direct for the first time. Only a couple of people knew me um, and had someone pull me aside and say, you know, if people understood your sense of humor, you know, just some more stuff about you, that this would all be a lot easier for you. And I took that to heart and it certainly changed um, the way I think our summer ended that very first summer. Um, and so I've been so grateful for that. And so we thought today we'd spend a little bit of time on this. Think about what are some intentional things um, that you can do to make yourself approachable because of your position, even if you're not a director, if you're your own leader or you're a seasonal program staff member, um, your position in, in its own makes you intimidating. But uh, what are some things that you can do to make yourself approachable? And Gab, I wonder for you what things you do intentionally to help people um, not feel scared of you. I think, uh, as you mentioned, Travis, um, one of the things I learned from you is acknowledging your power dynamic. And that's something I learned from you way before I ever even heard the language power dynamic. I didn't know what that actually meant. Um, and I, I remember you telling me that it was important for you to acknowledge to your staff that, you know, you're, you're a tall man, you're a man, you, uh, you know, you're in a position of power, all of these things add up to your power dynamic. And I started using that personally also in acknowledging to my staff that there is a power dynamic and, and that, that I need to learn to gain their trust every year. And, and that's okay. That's, that's part of my job. And that's my internal monologue that I have to myself before I, I start camp every summer is to remember um, that that these 17 year olds that are coming in, they were CITs or campers with you. They're seeing you in a different light. They want to impress you. And so I remind myself that they're, you know, they're bunnies. They're, they're just starting out. And then the same with my leadership team members, those first ones that are coming in. One of the first things I tell them is this summer, you're going to see me cry like a couple of times for sure. And their faces, their eyes go really big being like, oh, is she joking? And, and one of the older leadership team members like, oh, yeah, Gab cries. She's a crier. And I really am. I just do it obviously in private um, or in front of leadership team. But first would be acknowledging that there is a power dynamic. And I really had to do almost the opposite um, when I started off as a leadership team member. I'm, I'm, I'm five foot and a bit. And uh, I don't have a, a huge um, presence and I am um, love smiling. And so taking me seriously didn't, wasn't something that, that came naturally maybe to some staff members. Uh, and I had to sort of assert a little bit my, not my authority, but my confidence. 
And, but then I realized almost a year or two after that, I really had to start adjusting because it, it took no time at all for younger staff members to not feel like they could come and talk to me. So being vulnerable and, and explaining, you know, I'm here to, to, uh, um, you know, to listen, uh, but yeah, it's, it's first is acknowledging it to your staff that there is a power dynamic. What do you think, Joe? I think that it depends. So making yourself approachable, there are some really specific ways that I've done it over years. Um, because like Travis, I am a tall, large man. Um, and one of the ways I have figured out with campers and with staff is, is what I choose to lead in front of campers and staff. And so um, I take a huge back step here at camp, a huge step back, huge back step. Um, that's a dancing term, people, because I'm a big dancer. Um, I take a huge step back when people are going over um, sort of the policies and the procedures with campers on the first night. I'm often not at that opening campfire or not in the dining hall when they're going over those things because part of that is giving people the ability to know who, who they're responding to. What I choose to do is lead chapel daily and I play guitar and I let my, uh, let my true sort of personality shine and uh, witty and off the cuff and don't care if I make mistakes. And, and I think that that gives them a sense that I'm, I'm relatively a normal human being um, but also, uh, you know, still leave some mystery for the campers, right? And, and, and there's a magic part to that, right? That, that, that magical part that, oh, that's Joe and he's the camp director. As far as the, lead, the leadership team learns during spring staff how to be, right? We bring them up to my house for dinner during non-COVID times once a week and we hang out with them and play games and and it lets me get to know who they are, how they think, if they dislike chewing sounds like Gab does and um, all of those <laughs> things. And so um, I think that approachability is, um, yeah, approachability is one of those things that is important to be approachable um, without, uh, without changing, without taking somebody else's responsibility, meaning that if a leadership team member has a problem here at Pierce Williams, they should know the chain that they're following. And, and unless it's directly about our camp director, it, they're, all of their concerns should go through the camp director. And, and so there is that idea where you can be too approachable. I am not too approachable. I don't think I, I, uh, I, don't think I hit those <laughs> buttons. <laughs> but Travis, Travis, you and, and Beth have spent a couple of years at Buckeye with with me seeing me there and this is one of the places where my staff when they see me at Buckeye and I'm I was on the committee at the Buckeye Leadership Workshop for years on the bus on the ride back they'll be like we didn't know like we didn't know that you were like that all you could be like that for days in a row and I was like well yeah because I'm not in charge of anything mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I, I think that you make a good point, Joe. I think that there's um, approachable for campers and then approachable for staff. And it's kind of two different strategies. Um, I think it's incredibly important that senior leadership makes the same kind of effort that you do every day, Joe, which is to show up in front of your kids for a short period of time, get out of the office for one. That is the number one way for any camp leader to be approachable is to get out of the GD office. Yeah. Um, and, and then, you know, do some silly things. Like I, I, it being silly is my favorite state, um, but staff doesn't see that very often. I definitely show that to campers and counselors more than I would senior staff. Um, my favorite ever thing as a camp director to sit down with campers when their counselors right beside them and ask them, ask them to tell me how they like their counselor. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, sure it just, just little silly things. I think that, that doing that. And I think that's why I think it's important that every senior leader year round camp leader has like two or three signature moves at camp. Like you have your signature song at campfire, you have your signature, you know, like signature moves for me are doing silly announcements 
um, you know, leading a particular song or two at campfire, leading a particular opening to a meal. Um, and those are ways that kids can get to know me. But then there's, you know, beyond that, there's the stuff that I would do intentionally with staff too, because it's a different relationship. Um, but I think once I am, I, th I think once I develop trust with, with staff, then that's, a, that's a little different than the trust I have with, like I can trust you to look after campers and do a good job at that. Um, and then maybe I can trust you as a person that I would open up to. I'll be silly with you, that's fine, but I wouldn't necessarily open up to you necessarily. But mm -hmm. um, but again, you don't want to overshare, but I think you want to be intentional about that. Yeah. I think that that approachability is is something that when when, especially when leadership team members see you as a camp director talking about a very serious topic, um, it will change their perception about how much you care and how much you know. And, and this is illustrated when you're a new director somewhere, this is really, really difficult because if you're hired to be the hard person to make sure things are done right, people can dislike you. And if you spend too much time in the office, people can be like, well, you don't do anything. You're just in the office, right? Like we're out here working with kids. And when we're all young directors, we all heard those things. Um, but the reality is, is that when, when somebody comes to you with a, a child who's disclosed abuse and asks, you know, what, what the next steps are, or when, when somebody comes to you with a staff member who needs to be let go because they, because of whatever reason, and they want it to be a serious conversation. I think that what they, I think that's the approachability, right? Coming to you to joke with you about a game show that they saw on the weekend or whatnot, that's, that's like water cooler talk. It's not really approachability. That's, uh, that's just general nice people who, right, know some social skills. <laughs> but uh, I think that the more serious a situation gets at camp, the more you need that approachability with the people who, who will come to you with those, those things. Yeah. There, there's, there's for, for me, what's most important is that if we're starting with the, our youngest staff is that they're, they feel comfortable going to their section head. And it's really important for me for that section head to be able to connect on a personal level with every one of their staff members so that they're coming to them about kid issues or even um, you know their own professional issues or personal issues, they know what's going on. And that I'm creating that link with that leadership team member so that they're doing the same with me. What are, what are the issues they're dealing with personally or professionally and they're comfortable coming, coming to me. I won't be able to connect with all of my staff members. I want my staff members to feel like I have their back and that's, that's the most important thing for me is that they feel no matter what I have their back with even if I'm sending them home it's because I, I do care there's there's that level and I always have to remind myself of that uh, one of the group that I try to connect with uh, on a regular basis is our CIT group and um, and so about 10 years ago we started this program called 10 15 years ago and I can't remember when called Gab Special. So that's my name, Gabs and Spe Special. So it's an evening where it's just me and the campers and we tell the campers there's no counselors, which is of course not true. I have a team with me, but they're like a skeleton staff that help frame. It's just basically chaos. The, the whole program is almost just me giving the rules in a fun way and the kids loving life. And they're not allowed to tell the counselors um, what we did. If they, they have to the counselors asked they have to ask very depressed and said we had to do homework and it was horrible and that's the response that they need to give and I think that's the magic of Gab Special is that they don't they don't uh, talk about it but I work with the CITs on the program it's my program I decide what I want to do because I love running programs and so I get to train the CITs in on how to run programs and I can see the evolution of them from the beginning of the summer to the end of the summer by the end of the summer I'm barely doing anything I'm sitting on the side you know, enjoying myself and they're just Amazing. running the camp. Yeah. But those CITs and myself, I, I have built that relationship with them and we've been in it in the stress, but we've had so much fun. And afterwards we get to really celebrate and I get to say a big thank you to them. And it's chaotic and it's amazing and it's messy and, and we love it. So 
you know, there, there is an order of making sure that every staff member has somebody that is approachable, that's in a position of power so that they can tell the, that important information to somebody that can help them. And for me, that's, that's where I put my energy into my leadership team and into my CITs. Those, that, that's where I really put my focus in. And then of course I'm, I'm spending time with campers because that's where I get charged. My energy is charged with campers. Some people, their energy is charged with staff, but I need camper connection and silliness as you say, Travis. But I think staff members seeing me have fun with campers also creates that approachability piece. But I know a 17 year old is not gonna come directly to me with an issue. Um, my hope is they go to a friend and a friend pushes them to go to a unit head. Yeah, and, and I love that idea of Gab's Spesh, right? Like that's a, that's the type of program. We do something at camp occasionally because I don't plan well for things like chapel. Um, like an Ask Joe Anything <laughs> session is something mm. that our staff and our campers seem to really like. At chapel, it's normally more religiously based, but there are times with it where it's just staff and it's like, okay, you, and they know that it doesn't happen often, maybe one time each summer, sometimes not at all. So when they get the chance, it's this idea that they can ask you anything as a staff. And, you know, you ask for it to be appropriate and not write all of the same things, but they can ask you anything. And some of our staff have left saying some of their best things they've learned at camp are simply from hearing non-camp talk, right? Like about how do you know who, how do you know you're gonna marry the right person? I was like, well, you need to marry your your best friend, someone that you can truly, or someone who can become your best friend, right? Like that's, things like that don't come up in the camp day. Um, and it's, it's, it's one of those things where approachability is all about them knowing how much you care, right? And, I've come to realize over the past five years that when I go down and I see things that aren't done correctly at camp and I call people out on them, it's not because I don't like them. It's because I want camp to be perfect for campers. And, and that's just part of the personality is to say, yeah, this shouldn't have happened or this should be this way. And why, why, for God's sake, why is that table that I asked to be moved three days ago still where it is when that's not where it belongs. <laughs> but approachability is a, yeah, it's a tricky game to play. Yeah, um, I also think that, um, that part of the impact that you can have as a camp leader is to share your passion, to share your why in this. Um, and I think that, um, yeah, that that's really important that, that why you care so much about camp that, um, you know, that, that certain things can drive you crazy just because you are so focused on what matters and, and how you, um, how you, you do things. But I think it's, some of this comes down to us being better at sharing our own camp stories, mm -hmm. you know, and um, and then teaching staff, living out some of the things we teach staff. So one of my big principles in camp leadership always is to spend one-on-one -on -one time with people. Not a ton of time. I, I think the impact can be had in very short bursts of time that people just appreciate your attention focused on them mm -hmm. for a short period and an honest interest in them. It doesn't have to be, I have to take a deep breath and steal myself for a two hour open conversation with this person. It is just, we're stopping in the middle of chaos. I am looking at you and I'm really asking you how you're doing. I'm really checking in with you. And that is such a small move but it's so powerful coming from somebody that people look up to or the leader that people are intimidated by. Um, and I, I'm incredibly intentional about that as a, as a camp leader. And I've said this on the show before that I would go so far as to have and keep a staff list in my back pocket at all times so that I can actually check off when I have in a week had a chance to at minimum talk to the, you know, the, the, 12 to 15 staff or the next level below me, but then try to make sure that I do every couple of weeks have that same conversation with every single staff member, just 30 to 60 seconds of check in. And I, that made such a huge difference, I think, um, to help people perceive me and to our success as a camp. 
can you be too approachable? I know that that's not my problem, people. I get it. <laughs> but my my question comes from current young camp professionals <laughs> who want to make it right for everybody, right? So they're so approachable that they they want your that problem that should probably go up a chain so that it doesn't take up all of your time. They, they want to be filled in. Oh, so you had a conversation with Becky. Let me know. Whereas at my stage, I'm just like, everything with Becky's fine. We're working through it. Great. I didn't, but can you, how do you deal with people who you might perceive as too, and is it called too approachable or is it something else? I think it's something else. I, I don't think you can be too approachable, but I think that um, there's procedures that we need to follow and there's boundaries. And, and, I, and for me, uh, for me there's, um, there's a tricky line, I think, for young, no, I shouldn't say young camp professionals. I, I would say for some camp professionals, there's a tricky line where ego is fed through um, helping people. And you see those staff members or those leadership team members or those camp directors that scoop in where a section head should be taking care of it or an activity a specialist should be taking care of it, but they're coming in to save the day. They need to know, they be, need to know. And so there's something going on with trust. There's something going on, I think, with your own personal, you know, how you are fulfilled at camp. Um, but you're robbing, I think when, when you're at the higher up, you're robbing those middle management individuals of dealing with issues and if you're and sure if somebody's coming to you and they're 18 years old and you say thank you so much you know let's go to the section head and let's talk obviously we want to yes, verify yes, yes. just walk with them to yes. the person let's you're go do you're not brushing them off you're just no it's and it's and maybe they're hesitant maybe there's an issue with the section head. who knows you'll figure it out but i'm always weary of those camp of, of camp directors i shouldn't say those we, we all have our own processes, but of camp directors that need to be on stage, of camp directors that need to be in the middle of the chaos at all times, of camp directors that have to be in the know, we're, we're taking away opportunities from our middle management and from our you know, up and coming leaders to be on stage to problem solve. And sure, they can fill you in. And then that gives you an opportunity to say, good job. I really, I respect the way you dealt with that. You know, um, But then we're, we're starting to trickle into micromanagement and the why do you need to micromanage you know there's there's a whole avalanche of of things that happen but i don't think anybody can be too approachable i think especially as you get older and higher up um you can never be too approachable and when they approach you and maybe you're not the right person to be approached then you can guide them to somebody else but if you're if you can't turn staff members away i had a a camp director that said that they couldn't get any work done because staff just kept coming into their office all the time and complaining about stuff. And they're saying, you know, kids these days, which is something I really dislike hearing. And I was that's like, perfect. well, no, that's not kids these days. This is, you're not creating boundaries. And you're I not, think that, you know? Yeah, I think that's it. I think that it's, it's boundaries are best, right? Yeah. Like, and, and people like that don't know how, just haven't been taught that. Um, Right, even those people who need to feel loved and feel uh, get their energy from being in front of people, you need to understand where your boundaries are for those things, and to help your staff understand, approachable doesn't mean twenty four seven. Right? It, it, there's there's different um, there's different ways to look at it. So hmm. mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not. That's not a. Yeah, approachable doesn't mean that you're available all the time, doesn't mean that you stop everything that you're doing. Approachable means that I see you, I hear you, I'm here for you, um, but I also have a role to play. So I'm going to make sure you're going to get the attention you need um, at the right time of the day or through the right person. But that's also set, that's also caring because you want them to build strong relationships with middle management. You know, this is yes, yes. It's about care, really. Totally. And I think it, 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 that comes back to something, and I feel like I've said it a lot this season, um, that when you come into the office with a problem, to come to my office with a problem, my first question is going to be, what have you tried? Um, and 
if I'm not the right person for that, um, and I'm, you know, guarding my boundaries and supporting the middle management staff that I'm training to be good at this, et cetera, one of my questions will be, did you talk to your supervisor, whatever the label for that person is, um, before they came to me? Um, so, yeah, I've learned it when people come to my office, I don't even respond until they ask a question. Because oftentimes they're just coming to your office to talk about unload it. something. Well, and um, our editor will know this for a fact because there'll be times where like you you come in and Iskis Iskis as much as I love him he would come in and just talk about a problem that's fine and I would I just train myself to be like well don't say anything until there's a question because unless they're asking me something maybe all they need at this moment in time is to be heard right and oftentimes. Yeah. Iskis and other people will solve the problem with zero interaction, except that you're a sounding board. And I think that's approachability to some degree, right? That, that, and um, I totally agree. Yeah. Good listening is, is great approachability. You have yep. two ears and one mouth. <laughs> good, le good listening from Joe. Um, <laughs> that's a session I should do at camping. I think yes. Joe wants an approachability badge. He's like, I listen. Do I get the badge? <laughs> I did it. <laughs> I think the older I get, the better I get at being approachable. Mm -hmm. I think that when yep, you're a young sense. camp director who is hired a lot of times to fix problems, um, approachability is not your first concern, um, especially when those problems are to deal with issues that aren't so much the staff or you're just not going to solve the staff issues, staff yeah. and culture issues in one summit. Right. So. Right. Right. So Cab, what are things that you want your staff to know about you? Um, I've said this, I've said this a lot of times, like obviously my learning difference, I talk about that because that's an important piece um, because it, because it gives context. Um, another important part is how it works as working with uh, my mother, who's the other uh, camp director, and where does feedback go? How does that work? What does it look like? And I provide examples of when I've given Jackie feedback because staff have come to me and vice versa. I also make sure shamelessly, you know, in social evenings when it's just staff and leadership team, I make sure that one of them drops a story about how once they were scared to come talk to me, but then they did. And then how things were so wonderful afterwards. And I just uh, asked them to do so. And they do it because um, it helped the people like, really? It worked out? I'm like, yes. So th those type of things. I think the, the piece that, um, that confuses leadership team members that I got, I've gotten feedback on fairly often in my personal life as well, is that I seem very, very open and I seem... Um, you know, that I share a lot, but I'm actually quite guarded. And so what I've, what I've received as feedback in the past is that um, my leadership team members don't know how I feel about them. Even if I feel like I am sharing how proud I am or how much I admire the work that they do, for whatever reason, there's, there's sort of a, a little bit of a block and maybe that's a little bit me and maybe that's a little bit them. And so now I'm starting to tell people that that when I'm I'm genuinely saying that I enjoy what you did, it, it I truly mean it, and um, I know that's it's a my personality seems to confuse uh, some of that sincerity. So uh, that's something I'm working on, but it's also something I'm transparent about with my especially my leadership team. And Gab, is there something that you show people when you're comfortable with you? Um, whew, when I'm comfortable, with, I think, uh, I don't know. See, probably this is what <laughs> some of them were talking about. <laughs> it takes a lot for my guard yep. to come down. Yep. So I think, I think that, that I I'm guarded. And I think part of it is also, to be honest, is growing up at summer camp. Um, you have a lot of, when you're the camp director's kids, a lot of people are looking at you all the time. And, um, and I think I sort of created a, a little bit of a, a, a force field, but we would have to bring in some of my leadership team members to, to say, this is what Gab is like when she yeah, is yeah. actually relaxed. Yeah. That's fair. How about you, Joe? What is stuff that you want them to know about you? I think most importantly, I want, 
I want my camp staff to know how much I love camp and how much of an effect camp has had on mm -hmm. me. Yes, yes, yes. Right. If you know that I come from everything I do and say from a place of a, a place of deep passion for what I do, then everything else can be either excused or or you can right you can you know it, it's easier for them to understand um where i'm coming from i love keeping things from staff um because we have all lived the three of us for sure have lived full lives and so there's there's all of these extra things that you just can't tell somebody everything about you Right. And as the three of us are speakers at conferences, there's no way that a bio will cover everything about you. And so there are times when somebody's like, oh, you were a video DJ. Like a staff member will say that to someone else. Oh, Joe was a video DJ in the 90s. And they'll be like, you were a what? I was like, yeah, I was a, I was a video DJ. What's oh, a video I, DJ? <laughs> well, yeah, that's a, yeah, there used to be, do you know what, uh, do you know what uh, much music or MTV is? Uh, no. Okay, great. Um, imagine two 24 foot screens. Um, right. Or the fact that I right, like, it's all those small things and I don't share those immediately. Mm. I do. We have gotten in the habit of for staff training, doing something maker based is what I, we would call it now in, in 2020 terms something maker based yep. on the first night that all the staff get together during our weekend training so making a stuffed animal or learning how to basket weave or because it's a skill and i often teach that because it's a skill that i can teach and they they see you the first night before you've done anything else as a teacher as someone who has you know who can who is sort of guiding you through things and that's the way i see myself as a camp director more of a guide and a teacher than as someone who's going to answer all of your questions um and so i just i i guess i want there are times where i want them to know and and oftentimes our staff do learn that i was the right i was the fat kid at camp i was picked on i was bullied and mm -hmm. and i have a a long history of camp friends that i grew up at camp with who, when we talked when we were young staff members that we didn't have the most amazing camp experience mm -hmm. but we wanted to be camp people so that so that kids could have a better experience nice. right so um but sometimes those not so good experiences actually end up leading to the moments that get you to where you are yeah, of so course. someone saying you know one camp adult saying something to you that changes all of that bad into that five minutes of good and and then that will right like i had a october our new is one of mine right when i was being picked on and then um there was a, a my counselor when i was an older camper i i punched another kid in the face mm -hmm. in my final year as a camper nice. and oh, uh, he says to me i still have a scar on my on my uh on my pinky because i didn't know how to punch and uh my counselor says to me he's like you know you know i should be really mad but like that was awesome people often say hit me. like the other kid he's he goes people always say hit me and nobody just does it and you were just like okay and right the other kids like hit me i was like oh, okay great so it's it's those little things that you may or may not share like that story you might not you probably don't share with your camp staff but then part of approachability is part of, yeah, you want to be very careful not, the cult of the camp director is another part of this, that you don't want to be it all about you, right? That's the, that's. Yes, the totally, totally. Yeah. Well, you're, the, the intention though, behind sharing whatever story you, you deem appropriate, the intention is so that it makes you, of course, approachable but it's to create a space for them to be able to share whatever stories they're sharing. Um, so, you know what I, so you're right. You don't totally. want to make it all about you, but if the, you know, you're looking always Correct. about the intentionality behind what you're doing. We're not going to do, it's not about one upmanship stories. Right. It's just about, it's about, yeah. I yeah. Get, get out, get out when you can, when it's those. I was probably, <laughs> I was probably just last year where I finally got over telling one up, uh, one up stories. Like that, but, uh... <laughs> so you do not want to play this game with me because I will win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. I, I think for me, um, uh, the things that people say, when I've said this already, so I won't spend a lot of time on it, but I think that when people, when I'm comfortable around people or when I'm sort of purposely trying to, um, to show a bit of myself, is certainly my silly side, which I know both of you know really well, but a lot of staff wouldn't know that about me. Um, I, um, I think another sign is, um, and remember that Beth and I directed a church camp for 15 years, but I, I am the, in, I am the church camp director who curses like a sailor, mm-hmm. but not, but not until I really not know you. Yeah. The, although I will say the only thing that will make me curse in front of children is when they sneak up on me and present a snake in my face, and then I will drop some words <laughs> on those children. <laughs> <laughs> And I cannot tell you how many times that has happened. (laughs) Only once or twice because the staff member knew it would happen and thought it would be funny. But most of the time it's just campers are just excited and just run up and just throw a snake in your face. And then I'm dropping F-bombs and taking the name of the Lord in vain in (laughs) front of them because I don't like snakes. But there you go. We all have our limits. (laughs) 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 Uh, Cool. Well, I really appreciate this. Thank you both. This is a a fun conversation. I think incredibly important. It's one of those little um, small areas of the work that you do as a director that can have such a huge impact. Um, Being conscious of this, being conscious of the power dynamics that you that you hold over people, um, not just your title. um, And, and then how people knowing you as a human being instead of a title makes you um better because you can show off that you're in not infallible so therefore fallible um and uh and just some of the human things about you and i think it's just makes your life as a camp director more fun too mm-hmm. you you get to enjoy it a lot more too when when it works out that way so thank you both um so then i think we move on to our tool of the week so uh, if you're drawn in by the title and listen to this for the first time, the tool of the week is something that we ask each panelist to bring that makes them a better camp director. And Joe, I'd like to go to you first. What's your tool of the week? That's awesome. My tool this week is a, an article online called 50 Bits of Wisdom from Someone Who Just Turned 50. And a lot of these things have come up in our conversation today. I'm just going to read two or three of them. Um, it's it's an easy to read article, easy to bookmark and keep, but uh, number 10 is boundaries are the best. The sooner you learn how to set and hold them, the better. We talked about that. Um, aim for progress over perfection. Welcome failure. It will teach you the best lessons. Um, if you're a natural giver, be aware that takers love to take from you. Question everyone's motives. What do they really want from you and are you willing to give it? <laughs> And then one of my favorites, spa days aren't for everyone. The best self-care I found has been identifying abusive people in my life and putting them on a permanent dead to me list. No contact, no excuses, no power over me. Three strikes, you're out. Seriously, a game changer. And Smart. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's 50. I have it saved in my pocket as something I go back to and read, um, oh. you know, and just peruse occasionally just to remind myself that um, I'm living my best life. <laughs> and the author of that is Rusty Blazonoff, and she is a great writer. She's now one of the writers on boingbang.net, one of my favorite websites since forever. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, she wrote some really smart stuff. So that's great. Thank you, Joe, for sharing that. Yeah. Um, my tool of the week is <laughs> it's one of those I'm going to tell you this story so I can tell you another one. Um, is uh, a book by my friend Laura, um, and it's called Monster Feelings. It's a kid's book that she wrote, illustrated by another friend of ours. It's available print on demand from Amazon. So if you go to camparker.tv slash podcast and look up episode 138, um, you will see the show notes and you can pick up this stuff or get the link to um, the, the tools. But Laura wrote this book, um, did a ton of work on helping kids express um, express feelings and give them some language around that. And it's written for her toddler, um, like, it's like at her toddler's age. But it's one of those things that I think would be great to give every first year counselor 
um, or an LIT graduation thing. It'd be great for a camp to have in the library. And it just gives us so many interesting things. And, and Laura's a great, a great poet, so it's all written in rhyme. And, um, and it's really, really great. So Monster Feelings by Laura Tyson, um, illustrated by Michael, Michael E. Smith, um, who's another friend of ours. Michael has this book that is my, I don't know, tack on tool of the week. It's called Eyes. If you're seeing this, if you're listening to this and, and holding it up on. Oh, that looks folks. really cool. And it is a book written for, um, for young children. And it just has <gasps> an animal and their oh. eyes. And um, I buy these, I usually buy half a dozen at a time because there's always friends and camp alumni, et cetera, who have kids. And this is the book we always send them because this is a book that fascinates kids. Oh, so wow. our grandson Bear is only seven months old. This is his favorite book. Um, he just spends so much time with it. And so it's a bunch of different animals um, with uh, you know their name and an illustration of them. And um, we always keep some on hand. It's the, our go-to gift. Sorry, is that too fast? I um, love that. It's our, our go-to <laughs> gift for people when they have babies. My my wife is very afraid of big eyes. So that oh, whole yeah? book would be like... Terror, <laughs> terror to like, Jen. Like when I do big eyes, she can't look at my face. So that, <laughs> I, think, I think I'm going to give that this Christmas. <laughs> well, there you go. In the show notes, Joe, you can go to the show notes and buy a copy of Michael's oh. book. Um, but it's a, it's a really great one. So... Laura's book, Monster Feelings, is my rule tool, but I wanted to also share about Michael's book, Eyes. Oh, it's so fun. Gab, what's your tool? My tool is from a company called Hero911. Um, and so I don't know why I had a hard time saying 911. It's a fairly easy number to remember. So it's basically a full car emergency kit. Um, so you have a fire extinguisher, uh, lights, emergency lights that you can put up, and um, this uh, safety device that's looks like a USB charger, but it also, you can uh, crack a window from the inside of your car and also cut off your safety belt really quickly. And I got this given like a good father, my father bought one for all of his children and uh, his wife, all of our cars that. have yep. this, but it's a small, tiny kit. And I was really thinking this should be in every single camp okay. uh, vehicle. And just today yeah. it was running a small, <laughs> Aaron and on the other side of the highway there was a car that was on fire um, mm. and we could not get across but we we think it's it's all okay but the it's just you just never know so um, I particularly like the lights and the little charger for the USB charger thing um, what's great about it too is when it's unplugged it it's already uh, has energy in it so you can charge a phone um, if your car's dead yeah, yeah. so uh, it's uh, sixty dollars just went down in price. You can buy things individually, but I think this, the 60 bucks uh, kit, kit as a whole is awesome. And it's tiny and it's cool. It's very cool looking. I definitely like the look of the fire extinguisher, the little grenade fire extinguisher. Yeah. yeah it's really fun. Yeah. Awesome. Very good. Well, thank you both. Um, Gab, if people want to follow up with you, I wish I didn't open that every time with an M. I started listening to our <laughs> shows again and, and uh, catch myself with my funny vocal tics. Well, anyway, can I, um, how can people, people can find me. <laughs> people can find me. They can reach me on Instagram at Gabrielle Rail, Rail with two L's. You can DM me there, or you can check out where I work at waro.com, O U A R E A U.com. And there's an email there, and you can message someone. And that someone, Alexan, will get me that message. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks, Gab. Thanks a lot. Joe, how about you? Uh, if people, that's my tick, Travis, is I do this with my tongue. Um, if people want to follow up with me, they can find uh, all of my social links at yoyojoe.com, y-o-y-o-j-o-e.com. And when I say social links, all you're going to be doing is going to those social things because I don't post a ton. But you can also email me. And uh, I love talking about camp. If uh, if you will allow me to, I mm -hmm. will talk about camp. So, and other stuff. I do other stuff. Uh, yeah, search search for scroll sauce and through the history of uh, <laughs> camp <Backer. laughs> Did you did you just wait? I I made something with a scroll saw. All right. Okay. Oh, He's special gone. for the YouTube folks. We're going. Hi, right, come back Here and check it. Oh, oh, look nice. at that. 
I, uh, I don't have awesome. my camera on, so I can't see how well. This yeah, is yeah, yeah. Showing oh, it looks this good. Is, um, show don't tell them. Just uh, so people are, if they're listeners and haven't checked it out on YouTube, they will have to go check it yeah, out. So the it's a very two, cool thing that Joe it's made. Two it's layers, up. and yeah. this is cut. And so that is obviously a. Uh, so these Thanks. are Christmas tree type ornaments mm -hmm. and uh, hand painted by yours truly. Nice. And, uh, they're going in the mail as a secret Santa gift. That's oh. really cool, Joe. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. First time I made Mad them. skills. Good. Mad yeah. skills. Yeah. And I made it with a scroll saw. Just one, though. One scroll saw. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, I, I, I perfect I, the two scroll saw method. Yeah. I, I'm sad Chris wasn't here for more oh, scroll saw talk today. <laughs> um, Chris wasn't able to join us today, and we definitely missed his input, and we'll mm -hmm. look forward to having him back on uh, two weeks in a row with uh, only three people instead of four. Um, so if you want to check out the show notes, the tools, et cetera, they are at camphacker.tv slash podcast. This is episode 138. And uh, you can find us there. We do appreciate your, your ratings and review. They really help. Um, and we want to say thank you to, um, to Matt for being our editor and producer. And uh, tell him how grateful we are for him. Thank you all very much. And thanks for the evening, friends.